and thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Aaron Porras here with ILTV's Morning Briefing. The United Nations Security Council is today set to vote on a draft resolution that would demand answers from the Assad regime and obligate the Syrian government to cooperate with an international investigation into the chemical attack last week in Idlib. The vote is scheduled for this afternoon at 3 p.m. The resolution calls for backing the OPCW or the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons in finding out who ordered and who carried out the suspected attack. Further, it demands the Syrian government make available all flight plans, flight logs, and other military operation info from April 4th. This includes names of commanding officers over any involved aircraft and access to all air bases. United States Secretary of State Rex Tillerson at the same time as the vote will be in Moscow, reportedly trying to pry the Russian government away from their Syrian ally. Russia has used their veto power at the United Nations Security Council in the past on seven similar anti-Syria resolutions. With respect to the United States military, Pentagon Chief James Mad Dog Mattis said yesterday that he has no doubt that Syrian President Bashar al-Assad was responsible for the attack that left nearly 90 dead, a third of them children. While reiterating that the defeat of the Islamic State terror group was still the United States military's first priority, Mattis went on to say, quote, The National Security Council considered the international prohibition against the use of chemical weapons, the Syrian regime's repeated violations of that international law, and the inexplicably ruthless murders the regime had committed. We determined that a measured military response could best deter the regime from doing this again." End quote. Israel has barred the entrance of Chilean pro-BDS activist Anwar Makhlouf from entering the West Bank. According to a statement released by the Public Security Ministry, Makhlouf heads the Palestinian Federation in Chile and was denied entry into the West Bank through the Allenby border crossing in Jordan because of his alleged efforts to sabotage trade and economic relations between Jerusalem and Santiago. Last month, the Knesset passed a law preventing foreign nationals who publicly promoted boycotting Israel from entering the state. The law also applies to individuals who favor only boycotting products made in Israeli West Bank settlements. Shortly after the law was passed, Israel barred entry for pro-Palestinian activist Hugh Lanning as he was suspected for being involved with several anti-Israel organizations in the UK and for meeting with senior Hamas activists. Spanish police have just busted a 267 kilogram cocaine shipment from Colombia bound for Israel. Police at the port of Algeciras intercepted the cocaine shipment which had been smuggled inside bags of coal destined for Ben Gurion Airport. According to a recent United Nations World Drug Report, there has been an increasing demand for cocaine in Israel, especially from the white-collar working class. Israel is located at a crossroads of several major drug trafficking routes across Africa, Eastern Europe, and the Middle East, making it a major hub in the illicit international cocaine market. Last month, 33-year-old Jalal Al-Tarabin, an Israeli citizen, was extradited from Poland to the United States and charged with international drug trafficking and money laundering. Another Jewish community center has been vandalized, this time in Virginia. Swastikas, SS symbols, as well as the words Hitler was right, were found graffiti on the exterior of the JCC building. Less than a mile away, a United Church of Christ was also vandalized with swastikas, along with Islamophobic and homophobic slogans, such as, quote, Defend America, no Muslims, and Jesus knows no traitors, end quote. In related news, Juan Thompson, 31, pled not guilty for cyberstalking charges and for threatening Jewish community centers and the Anti-Defamation League. If convicted, he could face up to five years in prison. The FBI claims that Thompson threatened various Jewish institutions, including the ADL, JCCs in San Diego and New York, schools in New York and Michigan, and a New York City Jewish History Museum. Three weeks after his arrest, an Israeli-American teenager was also arrested at his home in Ashkelon for allegedly authoring the majority of the bomb hoaxes. Since early January, Jewish institutions across the United States, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand have been subjected to over a hundred bomb threats. The IDF has just arrested a Hamas parliamentarian in the West Bank, along with two other individuals. Ahmed Atun is one of four Hamas members of the Palestinian parliament, who's been stripped of their East Jerusalem residency and expelled to the West Bank. As of yet, the IDF has not yet said why the three men were arrested. However, Atun's brother was given a life sentence in Israel for the murder of three Israelis and was later released under the 2011 Gilad Shalit prisoner exchange. 
In related news, Israel has also arrested Ma'an Fukawa for suspicion of being part of Hamas's terror cell. Fukawa's brother, Mazin, was assassinated two weeks ago in the Gaza Strip. Hamas security officials claim that they have arrested someone who was allegedly admitted to killing Mazin Fukawa outside of his home in the coastal enclave. That's all for now. I'm Aaron Porras and see you later with our main daily broadcast from Israel at 2 p.m. Eastern Time.